Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. It's rather unfortunate, I think, that, uh, that all of us are familiar with a, a new sort of phrase that has entered into our vocabulary here lately. Uh, that phrase is fake news. Don't worry. This will not be a political sermon. I just like, there, there are about 50 people out there that had their heads down until I said fake news and they popped up. <laughs> so. Fake news uh, is that news which confirms our suspicion about someone but might not be true, right? And it spreads like wildfire. Uh, it doesn't matter which side of a political spectrum you're on. Uh, it doesn't really matter if we're even talking about political news. We know that rumor mills work. We know that news can spread when it confirms that thing that we desperately want to know or to hear or something else, right? We know that's true. In a more positive way, we also talk about things going viral, uh, right? That's a, a social media phrase that we throw around a lot, that it just starts to spread like crazy. And frequently that happens truly uh, with things that are just cute or entertaining, right? The one that I love the most from the last year or so is this video of a woman. Uh, I'm, I, well, it's viral, so most of you have probably seen it. Uh, this woman has gone into Target and she buys a mask uh, that uh, is of Chewbacca and it makes the Chewbacca sound from Star Wars and she brings it back to her car and tries it on for the first time and just burst into uncontrollable laughter for minutes and, I mean, hysterical laughter that brings her to tears. And someone sees this video and goes and it goes and it goes and it goes. Millions of people saw the video very quickly. While well, fake news spreads virally because of something dark within us that wants to confirm our suspicions, this video went viral because I think people were desperate for some comic relief to see someone else laugh authentically, right? It doesn't have to be a negative thing at all. That sense to which um, news can spread so quickly when it matches up with our deepest longings and desire is the very foundation of the story of the way that Jesus is revealed in the gospel according to John. It's not the way we usually think about the way that Jesus is made known to people. Um, usually we think miracles and healings and angels uh, singing in the fields to the shepherds, and so on and so forth. Actually, at the end of, we'll get a good list of it at the end of our service today. Uh, the last song that we'll sing uh, goes through a number of these, and it talks about uh, the Magi seeing the star and coming from the east because God did something amazing, and how Jesus will, uh, will heal the palsied limbs, and Jesus will uh, manifest himself on the mountain to the disciples in the transfiguration. All these great what we call epiphanies. This is a season of epiphany. All these great revealings. In the Gospel of John, right now, where we are, none of it. Before the first miracle, before the water was changed into wine at Cana in Galilee, before the first person was healed, no angels in the sky, no magi coming from the east, the Word has been made flesh and is among us, and people don't know about it. And one man, by faith, says, that's what we're looking for. And another man, by faith, says, that's what we're looking for. And people, by faith, begin to draw near. This story today happens. God entrusts this story to people who are willing to spread an invitation to go and take a look at what Jesus is doing, to go and see who he is. It's a beautiful moment in the gospel before the miracles. The first miracle is that someone has the courage to, tell, to say to someone else, go follow this guy and see what he's about. Invitation is not something we are typically good at in the Episcopal Church. Um, here's the statistic. You may have heard it before. Episcopalians invite someone to church once every 70 years. <laughs> not making it up. Now, here's the thing. 
I think at Christ Church, we are above average. So what do you say? Once every 50 years. How about that? Is that it's pretty good, right? That's a huge improvement over the rest of the Episcopalians out there. <laughs> We're not very good at it. And what really that means is that, that most of us never really invite anyone to come to church. Uh, some of you are way above average and invite a ton of people, and so you balance the rest of us out. Thank you. Thank you. you know who you are. <laughs> Thank you. Why don't we, why don't we invite people? Why don't, what's hard about saying to someone else, um, hey, why don't you come and join me at church? There are probably a lot of different answers to that question, but here's, here's one thing I think. Is that more often than not, I think we are somewhat anxious about the need to answer someone's questions or to help create an experience that we think that they are waiting for. Somewhere in there, I think that we, well, we sort of feel inadequate as representatives of the church. Today, we see an antidote to our feelings of inadequacy. John's not perfect. John, frankly, John's uh, kind of a kook. Uh, the first disciples aren't perfect by any means. In fact, they're pretty weak. But their deepest longing is to see the light that has come into the world. Their deep longing is to be changed by the love of God. And all it takes is for one person to invite and this story, not fake news, but good news, becomes viral. God trusts us with that sacred responsibility to let other people get a little bit closer so that they too can be transformed. God's mission of reconciliation and hope and love in this world well, it's so invulnerable that God can allow us to participate in it. Whether or not we do it well changes perhaps whether or not it happens today or tomorrow for someone, but not whether or not it happens. God wins this game. But you and I are allowed to play the game too. We just sometimes need a little push like we get from today's gospel to remember what it's like to have Jesus turn around to us and say, come and see. To have someone burst into our lives like Simon did and have someone say, I think I've found what we've been looking for. Come with me and check this out. Most of us are here because one of those two things happened in our life. Either they happened already or we're waiting for them to happen. For that moment for Jesus to turn around with us and say, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? Why don't you come stay with me and find it? Most of us are waiting for that moment where we can meet Christ and be changed. Simon Simon would never have entered into this gospel had someone not said to him, come and see Jesus. And in seeing Jesus, the love of God in Christ changed his fundamental identity. Simon is no rock. Simon is no Peter. But he becomes that because Jesus said to him, come and see, because someone invited him. The world that is around us is, is full of people who are, well, whose deepest longing is to be a little bit closer to something that is full of light and love and hope and reconciliation. In a world that is so full of darkness and bitter division, of pain and hopelessness, there are hundreds of us here today because Jesus told us at one point to come and see because we came face to face with that light. There are thousands of people out there who would love an invitation, who would love to be invited. 
who would love good news instead of fake news, who would love to be allowed to bring their question to God and not get cheap answers from God's PR team, who would love to draw close to the light, let that light shine in their darkness, who would love to be healed and be made whole. Today, I invite you, uh, I plead with you, think long and hard about someone in your life that's just waiting for an invitation. Think long and hard about someone in your life that longs to be closer and have the courage in your heart by the mercy of God to extend that invitation. You don't have to answer their questions. You don't have to be the most Christ-like person in the world. You don't have to structure their experience. You just have to be willing to say to someone else, I think I found what we're looking for. Come and see. And perhaps they too can be transformed by the love of God in Christ. Amen.